Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract. In the last tutorial, we took a look at how to go from page to page by swiping, in this case, with the pages object. We made two pages and we put them in there. But what I'd like to do now is uh, take a look at how we can add uh, tabs down here or arrows to be able to get to these with tabs or arrows. Oh. You can see that the tabs down below are going to be a little bit problematic here unless we move that up, but that's not a big deal. I guess we can do that. Okay, so closing down that. And here's our code from last time. And what we'll do is we'll save this file right here. File, save as, boop, 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 14, and we'll call it arrow, uh, tabs. What, what, what would you rather, 14? Arrows or tabs? Uh, let's call it tabs, I guess. That's a component. It's a little bit more useful in general to tab to different places. So we'll save that. And then we can call this 14. And up here we can say tabs and arrows. OK. All right, so we had two pages there. This page, we might want to move that up just so we can make room for the tabs. We can put the tabs on the pages, and then as the page slides, the tabs go with it. Or we can put the tabs above all of the pages and just keep them there. So it's sort of up to you. It depends. Why don't we make them up top here? Const, just have a look and see what that looks like. Const tabs is equal to a new tabs. And I've noticed now that that changes that back to a lower case. So a new tabs and we will dot pose these tabs at say zero from the center and about 50 up from the bottom. So from the center and the bottom. And we can just do that on the stage and then we get that. So we've got one, two, three, four by default it happens to be just right exactly aligned with that. And you see how that stays. So that might look a little bit awkward. I don't know, maybe arrows are expected to stay, but tabs kind of would slide with it. Obviously we, uh, we don't have four pages at the moment, so we want to be able to adjust those tabs and we can do that. And the other thing is, is the, the, the lines from the effect are sort of going over the tabs, which, uh, why are they doing that? I guess the effects are, must be on the outside of the page and they're coming up on top of the tabs. Are they? It looks like I am. <clears throat> so despite having put the tabs on the top here with the pages underneath, I'm not sure if there's a way around that. Uh, anyway, if we were to put it in the page, so this is page one here, we could do it on page one. So comma page one, and let's have a look here to see what we get, see if we sort of like it better. Now the tabs are part of the page. So they sort of slide with it and we'd have other tabs here. So to do that, you would clone them. Oh, what secret message is that? <laughs> I forgot, I can't just sit on a line and hit copy and paste uh, like I can in my Atom editor. So in Atom, you just sit on a line anywhere, copy and paste, and it pastes the line, but here I had to select it. So uh, I'll call that tabs one, tabs two, and at the bottom of page two. Yeah, one problem is if you have 10 pages and you end up with 10 tabs, it, it's not all that bad. Um, to tell you the truth. And so as we slide that now, we've got the tabs in both places. Uh, we have to sort of handle how they're they're being picked at that point, because this one will want to come in with number two being highlighted. And this one would, well, it had number one highlighted. So let's assume for now that we'll leave the tabs outside. And so we'll just call them tabs. We have lots of examples around. How I usually do it is I put the, the tabs in the page itself, if I'm using tabs. And I found that that just seems a little bit better when you're swiping on a smaller mobile device. You don't mind if those tabs swipe with you, unless possibly if they're right at the very bottom of the page, anchored to the bottom, I might leave them there and then swipe the page sort of up above it. 
that would probably be a route to go as well. If, um, if we wanted to, we could put them at the bottom and then make the page only as big as whatever is left over, not the whole width of the page. Uh, so there are some tabs and the idea though is we want these tabs to, to be one and two or something. Let's see, uh, we could call them names. What are the names of these things there? Are they all the same? No, one, one of them is locations or something. Uh, rooms and models. Rooms and models. Sounds pretty decent. Or we could say one and two, etc. Uh, but uh, let's see. So we're passing in tabs. If we say uh, one and two, that would work. But uh, rooms, comma, model. All right, and let's just have a look and see if that gives us rooms and models. Looks like it gives us a break. Oh, yeah, tabs probably the, the width is the first parameter. This most likely is, well, is it giving us an error? F2, well, no error, but um, I'm still without internet, by the way, so I can look up in the docs, which I can't do right now, desktop reveal, unless I have Adam open and look at my docs that way. So Adam's just coming in. Until then, I think it's the width probably or something like that. So if we say uh, 300 comma, let's have a look. It might be the width and the height. So 350 and control enter. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? So rooms and models. And uh, oh, we've still kept it added though. We don't want to add it to the page one. We'll just add it to the bottom. Rooms and model seems good. You can specify other things too, like the spacing and colors and, uh, of each button. So tabs are quite flexible. But tabs basically are a bunch of buttons in, uh, in a, a tile. We tiled a bunch of buttons. And then there's also uh, vertical tabs that you can do. And there's also a, a pad. A pad is like a grid of tabs, which are buttons. And we have a change event, so we can dot change, or we could say tabs dot on change. So those two things are the same. If we say tabs dot on change, call this arrow function. That would be one way to do it, but it's not chainable. So we have to come out and do the on method there, whereas change is a chainable method where we just call the arrow function. So that's usually how we do it now. Okay. And when we change, we're going to want to go to pages.go and page two, I guess. Uh, well, okay. It depends on which tab was pressed, doesn't it? So right now, this will work because as soon as we hit page two, that's a change and we'll go to page two. But when we are on page two and we go to page one, it's going to go to page two, uh, which isn't really what we want. So we're going to have to do a little bit more than that, but let's just see if the first part works here. I go like that and off she goes. Okay, nice, huh? So that's not too, too hard, but unfortunately that doesn't go back to rooms it stays there. So what we have to do is we have to find out which page we're on. So if pay, if, uh, let's see, what are we, tabs dot current, well, I think we can just say tabs dot text is equal to room, oh, no, models, models then we want to go to page two. Sort of depends on when this change event happens has the text already changed? And I think it has. So I'm going to just say that. You don't need this the squigglies there if this is the only thing we're doing. Else, pages, in this case, dot go, page one. Okay, have a look. Models, off it goes, rooms. Oh, okay, well, that was kind of unexpected. We forgot to say the direction and it just sort of kept, it should go backwards, shouldn't it? 
So you can specify in the go here. When we go to page one, we'll want to go backwards. So that is to the left, uh, left, we can just say that. Now, most likely that's the next parameter. Can't remember for sure though. And it is. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the internet and I don't think I'd be able to dig up the raw picture from it. But uh, I did a, a picture of how to do this in Flash, like how to make two movie clips and uh, which represent two pages. I put a button in each, maybe a picture in each, a button in each, uh, maybe just the button in each, and then how to go from one page to the other uh, without any transitions even. And so I did that in Flash. I also did it in uh, iOS or uh, in Xcode, uh, Apple's thing. Apple's thing was 10 times, at least 10 times as much data as Flash, as in it was just unbelievable how many panels you had to fill in, how many head, headings, footings, uh, little uh, bits of um, code basically. For, every, for each page, you had to put in three different files for each page plus all of these settings, it was just unbelievable. So what I did is I took the same size text and overlaid it basically, uh, so in other words, all the steps that I had to do to do it in Apple, took the same size text as all the steps I had to do in Flash. And Flash, you could read quite easily, it was quite nice. Apple was almost black. The data just piled up so much that you couldn't even tell what was going on. And Zim does it in about a 10th of flash. So what, what you're looking at here is even easier. Uh, we, if you take away, you know, the, the content here, which was this stuff, can I collapse that? Can I collapse that? No. Okay, so if you comment out this, sorry, comment out this, beep, 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 comment, and you comment out this, comment, or what I probably should have done is just take, there's a page, there's another page, here's the pages that says, go from one page to the second page. We added a whole bunch of extra stuff that we really didn't need, but if you just said, new pages, page one, page two, there, and then the tabs, we're positioning them, and then if we change, we swap from one to another. So just that, and page, page. Okay, I mean, it's, it's hard to get any smaller than that. Don't you agree? Like this, we didn't have to necessarily center it on the bottom, but uh, I mean, whatever. Change, if the tabs is models, go to page two, else go to page one, but go to the left. This is very sparse. And Zim is completely like that. Zim is very sparse and constantly coming in at well over half of any anything that we're putting up, up put up against different frameworks out there. Uh, we're at 37 uh, percent other frameworks in terms of the amount of code that we're typing here. I've been doing this for a long time. I'm a Canadian New Media Awards winner. I built in Director. I built in Flash, and I know how to make it as simple as possible. <laughs> So hopefully, hopefully you're digging this, you know, and that you like it. Um, but that's a little bit of a story, and I'm sorry I can't show you those pictures because I have no internet. Oh, well. Anyway, so that, that was the tabs. Let's take a look, though, at arrows, okay, and see if we can get those going out. Oh, darn. Looking for a hotkey. Um, uncomment section. And here. Uncomment section. At least you guys aren't working in Xcode, which is Apple's uh, development world. <laughs> beautiful components, no doubt, beautiful components, but uh, ooh, boy, that's go outside and break a broom against a porch, <laughs> porch pillar <laughs> kind of code that you're talking about. And on the Apple environment, I mean, okay, maybe you're Apple and I don't want to Dash Apple too much, but man, their development, they've got all these panels. So everything's in these gray panels that look all the same and they aren't even modal. So you, you press on, 
you're trying to open something and the thing doesn't come up to the top. It's like stuck five panels beneath other panels. And it's just like, oh, I'm crying out loud. All their docs are the same color. All their pages are the same color. So consistency is okay for the most part, but you know, if everything looks the same, it just becomes a bit tricky to realize where you are, or recognize what you're, what you're doing. Uh, mind you, I don't work in Apple, so maybe I'd get used to it. I'm starting to feel that way in dark mode. Do you see what I mean? Like, look at, thanks, Adobe. What the heck, is, what, what am I looking at here? Oh, okay, uh, I see. I'm supposed to grab this gray line. I think it's gone a little bit too far. I think I think the tops of these bars should have a color on them that we can recognize them as a window. So this is starting to approach the Apple world of, you know, I can't tell what the heck is going on. <laughs> anyway, blah, blah, blah. So what we're doing, arrows. Oh yeah, okay, so arrows. We've got tabs there, great. Uh, well, we could put in arrows as well. So let's put that down here, const. Uh, this will be, how about arrow left? Const left is equal to a new arrow. And we'll dot pose this at um, 50 comma 50 comma from the left and the bottom. Let's have a look at it. Okay, great. We called it left, but it's obviously not really a left arrow, is it? So the trick is to dot rote that 180, I think that would probably do it. And now we have a left arrow. I can't remember to tell you the truth if there is something in the arrow itself that says that you can do that. I don't think so. I think we just rotate it. Whichever way you want the arrow, we just rotate it. So there's one arrow and we want an arrow Oh, I did the same thing as before, where I just sat on the line and copied, but I have to select it all and copy. And this is right. Too bad those don't have the same number of letters. Huh? I like it when, when they do. That's why I do top and bot, B-O-T. All right, so that's an arrow. We won't have to rotate that arrow though, and we're gonna position it from the right. So we're positioning it 50-50 from the right on the bottom, and then you get this. Or if you're in Flash, which you are, and uh, animate, sorry, <laughs> sticker, sticker, I hope you don't mind. I mean, I'm sorry, just use Flash for so so long. Animate uh, is nice too. But anyway, then we've got the arrows. Uh, it, you could have put these arrows in as some sort of movie clip or a button. I think they're buttons. Do the, your buttons in, in Adobe Animate have, you still have component panels and stuff? Anyway, we used to, um, but I don't think they had like arrows like this exactly. They, they would have words and they were round. Zim's got round buttons too, but with, uh, with Zim, you can specify any icon as the icon of it and then keep the button backing, or you can get rid of the button backing uh, as well. So you can specify a backing, you can specify an icon, or just use the default rectangular backing. And that means you could quite easily make arrows like this with a Zim button, but after, after doing that so many times, <coughs> we decided to make an arrow uh, class, as you can see here, the arrow class. Not only that, but this arrow class will hook up to the tabs. Uh, I can't remember how, though. <laughs> I, I haven't done it too many times. Mm, let's go take a look in the docs. Uh, here's are the docs for me, and I don't have internet at the moment, so I can't go check online. So I'm gonna go control F, and I'm gonna look for zim.pages. Well, let's start with arrow, arrow, like that, and that will find arrow pages. Ah, okay, so that's probably it right there. It looks like we specify a pages object, so pages, a zim pages object. If null, then this is just an arrow button, that's all. If set to pages, a, a, a pages object, it will automatically work to change the pages. Also see direction. Ah, so direction, default right. A direction right, left, up, or down for the page button will lead to, I don't actually think that, come, come to think of it, it's sort of funny, I don't think we turn the button at all if you say direction right. We don't make it go to, well, default was to the right. Yeah, okay, so if we say 
direction left. I don't think we actually make the button turn left. That would make sense though. Hmm. Okay, well, let's have a look and see if, uh, if it does. So there we go. We're just specifying a pages object. Let's have a look now. Uh, the pages object is called pages and a direction is this one's left like that. So let's not rotate it anymore and see if it will actually do the rotation. I think those were built at different times and therefore I <laughs> never got hooked up. Okay, so we go control enter on that and yeah, sure enough, the arrows are both pointing to the right there and it doesn't seem to quite be hooked up yet. I'm clicking on any error, 12 F12. No error, but it's not going to the next page, as you can see, as I sort of thought it was going to. So did I do something wrong in how I specified these? Let's go back to those docs. Well, I don't think that the left and the right is the next one or something like that. Arrow. Ah, background color. That's why they went back. Or black, sorry. Background color, roll background color, then pages, then direction. And look, type as well. So we have different types of arrows if we want. So it was two colors in here. So null, null if we want the default colors. Or we could go Zim Duo and just target those directly right away. But just as easy to type that out. And let's have a look now. Okay, so I'm closing some of these down just so I don't have a thousand of them open. And here we are. So note that this one's grayed out. It's still facing the wrong way, but this one takes me there. Great. And now this one's grayed out because it's the last one, and that one takes me there. But I think we better put that rotation back, huh? <laughs> Dot, rot, rot, and uh, not, uh, 180. All right. Well, that's something that maybe we should have considered uh, automatically rotating the button if we say which direction we expect it to be. Oh, that's the wrong one. Control enter. Okay, there we go. So we can't go to the left, but we can go to the right. Now we can't go to the right, but we can go to the left. So that's pretty easy too, isn't it? Wouldn't you say? Very nice. And, and you see how that's hooked up? Even if we go to, see how that one's blue to the right? If I click this, I can't go, it's not blue anymore, it, it knows. If I go back to rooms, I can't go that way. So this would also work with more of them. There's some other options too. There's different types of arrows. So uh, what are those different types of arrows? How are you guys doing? Hopefully you don't mind that I don't know everything. And sometimes I have to check the docs. <laughs> so the type, what kind of types are there? If we come on down here to where the parameters are, parameters. There's the background color, roll background color, pages, direction, type, triangle. Thick is a fat arrow, thin, an angle. All right, let's have a look. Thick, thin, an angle. Thick. Control enter. Oh, very nice. That's a thick one right there. So it's kind of got a thick stem on it like that. And can you imagine what thin's going to be like? Thin. Should we put one here too? Balance it a little bit. Oh, okay. I recognize those. Not too bad. A little hard to see the blue on the gray though, isn't it? I want to adjust that color that we're using there. What would that be? So this is background color. White and white. I, don't, I can't remember what the roll background color was. Okay, so there's a white one and white. White looks pretty good. Roll background color could be maybe, what color do you want? Green? Oh, I can't double select. I'm so used to now being able to select as many times as I want and type, type just like a double click, hold down the control, double click that. They both get selected, type the word green and both of them um, change. Okay, that was thin, and so I'll have to do two changes here. Thin, and what was the other one? Angle or something like that? Bracket, angle. Mm, angle it is. Oh, how's that for memory? Did you guys remember that? And now we have a white angle. 
Okay. Oh, green rollover on gray is dreadful. I think we need to go to purple. Purple on dark might be bad, though. Well, let's go to pink. Was it pink before? I can't remember. Pink. I think it was blue before. Pink. Control enter. Hmm. I think something went wrong. White, white, pink. Oh. Control enter. I thought I had a rollover on it. Oh, that's good. That one's got a rollover. Yeah, it's got a rollover. Okay. All right. Uh, good enough. I, I, I like the first one. <laughs> All that. What was the first one? I don't know. Leave it. Leave it off. Let me check that rollover again too. I was surprised that it didn't roll over. Oh, okay. I must have just missed it. They have exp what's called expand on them. Do you see how even, I'm not even on the box. The box around it is nice and tight, but expand by default is 20 pixels outside the box. And you can adjust that if you want. This helps on mobile so that you don't keep on trying to hit this little triangle with your thumb. You know, you just hit anywhere in here and it's going to do it. All right. I love it. Thank you for hanging out with me. I am Dr. Abstract, and this is this has been a Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. Hopefully, you're enjoying some of the storytelling as we go. <laughs> Not sure what kind of mood I was in. A little bit of a lazy mood. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Lazy with the mouth. <laughs> talking, talking. If you want to talk to us, which would be great, you're welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. Hopefully one day we've got a, a technician coming to fix our internet and that, then they'll be in tomorrow night. I just had to cancel a big event that I had ah, because the internet didn't work. <laughs> it worked for most of the day and then half an hour before the event <laughs> it started to go down. And, uh, anyway, and it just didn't make it. Okay, take it easy. Bye-bye.